Diego's and welcome to the Four Diego's Hot Topic. I'm Rodrigo Rodriguez. With me today is Warren Diego, we've got Carlos Alberto Diego and Vinny Venezuela. Well, the hot topic, of course, is now the resignation of Ian Crook, the Sydney FC coach, resigned after the capitulation, um, after Sydney FC were 2-0 up against Melbourne Victory. They lost 3-2 and, of course, 7-2 uh, uh, smashing against Central Coast Mariners the week before. Carlos... Um, Look, he looked like a he looked like a broken man on Fox Sports after the game, but uh, this was a bit of a shock, wasn't it? I want to reverse beep 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 beep. Months and months ago, when he first got the job, I was flummoxed by the fact that a bloke who's had such a long career as an assistant coach uh, across the world uh, in American Samoa, he got a job there, and many other places, a great bloke who's well respected, a good player in his own right, but never a head coach. Why was he given the job, the Sydney job in the first place? And as it's all transpired, the guy wasn't up to it and he's admitted it. Carlos, I want to know what sort of questions did they ask when they interviewed him? Like, <laughs> was the question, how do you handle pressure? put on the table, because clearly he doesn't. <laughs> no one forces you to say yes, Carlos. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, you know? Ian Crook, no one asked him to say yes. Yeah, but if you're the fourth guy in line, Carlos, if they're coming to you as the fourth guy in line and they're asking you... We so really, there's really no, responsibili no responsibility for the interview panel to see that... Oh, of course we, there is. We're one of the biggest, or so-called, we regard ourselves as one of the biggest clubs in Australia, in the biggest market in Australia. We've been underperforming for years and we're going to... Uh, uh, hire a coach who's going to be taking the pressure and uh, meeting the needs of very, ma very many, many thousands of fickle fans out it's there. Fickle. And uh, and you're saying there's no responsibility on the interview panel on the club itself. Oh, of course, of course, there's responsibility on the club. But he was there as a as, as a junior assistant. He would have been working his office and saw the revolving door <laughs> of guys going in and out for interviews. And then they finally come to him and said, "Oh, we want to interview you." Surely he knew that he wasn't the number one guy. And I mean. If, you, if, if you're not wanted, Carlos, and I felt that from time to time, <laughs> if you're not wanted, you know, and you yet, say no. And yet, you still hang around. Yeah. <laughs> but, Why are you still here? Yeah, exactly. Now, look, 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 I mean, the game changed, of course, when Alessandro Del Piero was recruited to uh, Sydney FC. I've got a feeling that Ian Crook probably looked at that and uh, just had a picture of Mehmet Djurakovic uh, in, in the corner of his mind's eye because um, that was a game changer for Ian Crook, wasn't it? Well, of course, and that was always going to happen. They're a big club. They may have, they may, may have had an internal strategy to say, listen, we've lost a lot of money in the last couple of years. Let's just get through this year. Ian Crook's a cheap alternative. We won't build uh, a side that's too expensive around him. And that's what it's looked like. And suddenly, out of the blue, Tony Pignata and, uh, and his uh, posse of uh, agents have gone over to Italy and recruited him in a world first. And congratulations to him oh. for doing it. But you're not giving uh, the coach the structure then with the rest of the players. You're bringing in a Rolls Royce and you've got Datsuns around them and it's just not going to work. <laughs> Except for Emma, he's no Datsun. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, what happens is if you don't have a cohesive unit, yep. I'm not saying these players individually are bad players, but what it is is you need then someone who's a very powerful person with someone like Del Piero in the change room, Everton in the change room and all the other things that go on with a big, big uh, club in a big, big state. You need someone who can really control that. And Ian Crook did not have the experience to do it. And in the end, it didn't take him long to resign and recognise it himself. There's quite, it's quite possible that Sydney are going to stuff it all up now because uh, you now have to get someone who will command that dressing room and now we know that it's not, a, it's not an easy, friendly, loving sort of place. It's got to be hard and you want a big man for the job and Harry Redknapp, I don't know. <laughs> your, no, your, turn, your time to shine in the A-League. It's clear the great one, Alessandro Del Piero, if if he's not the king maker, if he's not the king, he's the king maker in all this, Vinny, surely. Because you'd I'll have to say... Harry then. Come on down. <laughs> you'd what? have to say, wouldn't you, that if Sydney don't get this right, the Del Piero thing could go down the gurgler really quickly. And as such, if you're going to reinvigorate him, and he's obviously not happy behind the scenes with a whole lot of things, if you're going to reinvigorate his desire to play for that club... You're going to allow him to have some control over the guy that's going to turn the rest of the group around if it's not him himself. Let's do something that the Diego's don't often do. Let's speculate. Let's speculate. <laughs> Ernie Merrick, of course, resigned from the job at, uh, with Hong Kong National Team two weeks ago. It's a curious timing, by the way. Two weeks ago, he resigned. Gary Cole, his partner in crime uh, with uh, Melbourne Victory when they won so many things in the opening years of the... Uh, of the A-League. Uh, of course, he's the football, direct, uh, football operations manager there at uh, Sydney, and 
he'd have, I would assume he would have a lot of um, input into who the new coach would be. What chance Ernie Merrick getting that job number one? And secondly, what chance him succeeding in Sydney? Look, I, I don't know, Carlos. I, I, I would not um, match the resignation of uh, Ernie Merrick from, from his role Are you over serious, there. Rodrigo? Would, there's no such thing as a coincidence in football. <laughs> oh, geez, that's this right. is a plan. This is a, no, I don't know whether it is a plan. Yeah, you but could be right. If the fish spells or stinks, it stinks <laughs> from the head. You've got to think that there could be something going on but here, Rodrigo. It, it doesn't matter how he gets a job if he gets it, mm. but can he be successful in Sydney, Vinny? Uh, look, I don't think he can. I, I think that dressing room is too big, and I think Ernie, as good as he is, uh, is a quietly spoken man, and someone like Del Piero, Emerton... Big players, they want they want someone, I think, that can command them. Harry Kill wanted yeah. someone that could, could rule the dressing room as well. Mm. I agree with that. I think I think they have to get a big coach. Alessandro Del Piero, we all thought that, you know, the last thing that Sydney wanted was a short term win with yeah. Alessandro Del Piero. They've got the guy, he's you know, he's been fantastic for the club. Membership's up, merchandise is up, it's all going quite well, you'd think, off the field from a commercial sense. They, get, they need to get it right on the pitch and they need to get a coach that can command the res respect from everyone on that squad. What worries me, though, is why couldn't we have anticipated, or not us, because I actually saw this coming a long time ago, but I had to say, yeah, well, I am a soothsayer of yeah. soccer. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, uh, but Sydney FC, these guys are highly paid individuals. Uh, they've run a big club in Australia before. Some of them actually run clubs overseas. Uh, you know, the, the owner of the place has uh, got Russian links and, and, and also uh, has been involved in Russian football. These people are experienced. How could they ever allow this to happen? Uh, uh, with the possibility of Alessandro Del Piero coming, maybe we didn't see it coming, but we saw what happened with Melbourne Victory last year, with Harry Kuehl coming at the last minute and suddenly threw everything out. It was turmoil in the change room. We can't afford this to happen. And maybe the resignation of Ian Crook falling in his own sword. And by the way, credit to Ian Crook, being mm. honest and, uh, and a bloke who respects the club so much to come out the way he did. But why didn't the club see this? That's what worries me. The next decision may be just as dysfunctional as this one was. Well, I think the club probably... Did see it after probably um, the 7-2 smashing they got. But there's no point seeing it after you've given the guy a no, three-year right. contract. Yes. That's the thing. This should have all been discussed before he was uh, appointed. Yep. No, you're yep. absolutely right. I, I agree. But uh, any last um, any last words on the hot topic today with Ian Crook resigning, James? Yeah, I think it's good for football, Rodrigo. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Vinny Venezuela? Look, I wish him well. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure the club will... Well, the club has to recover to make the whole Del Piero project work. It's so important that Sydney get this right. Uh, but it's so important for the A-League that Sydney get it right. But last night, fantastic spectacle, Melbourne and Sydney. And I just wonder if they... If they do get it right, the 21,000 that they got last night should have been 40,000. Oh, I agree. I don't know totally what they were getting 21,000 for. Get it right and you'll really milk that marketplace. Who knows what's uh, Pierre Litbarski doing there, Carlos? <laughs> He's won the premiership with them, so they may as well go back to the start. It's back to the drawing board for Sydney FC for this season with their coach. Well, that's it for this week's Hot Topic. Until next time, ole! ole!